more new Necron rules and today it's new stratagems. It's coming right up. Necrons! Nick speaking and welcome to this video. Right today we are looking at some new stratagems so let's dive straight in. One of the benefits of sleeping for millions of years is that you can get to dream up new ways to defeat your enemies. Now, as the Necrons prepare to reclaim the galaxy, they bring with them a host of tactics to unleash on the younger races who would dare to unsurp them. Today, we're taking a look at some of the stratagems in the Codex. The new Necrons Codex will feature a whopping 40 stratagems, that can be used in addition to the core ones in the rulebook and these are split into six different categories. This makes it easier for you to keep track of the different stratagems when in game they are used. The same thing is happening to all of the stratagems in the new codexes. Okay, well that seems sensible and hopefully the data cards will also have the different categories so that it's easy to see them on the cards as well as in the codex, which I'm sure they will. Now I've just counted up how many stratagems we have in the current codex and it's 27, so we've got 13 new stratagems. Whether those original 27 are in the book and are the same, we'll have to wait and see, but at least we've got some new stratagems. So the first one is battle tactic stratagems. Along with the return of some of the classics, such as Dimensional Corridor and Extermination Protocols, comes the incredible deadly Techno Oracular Targeting, 1CP, Necron's Battle Tactic Stratagem. Use this stratagem in your shooting phase before making a wound roll for an attack made by a Necron's model from your army. Do not make a wound roll for this attack, it automatically wounds the target. Now this seems quite reasonable, it does say an attack by a Necron's model rather than a unit, so my instant thought was it's obviously a single miniature like say a Doomsday Arc for example, however when you read the text underneath it says use this when firing the transdimensional beamers from your canoptic wraiths at high toughness enemies and take advantage of that sweet minus 3 AP and 3 damage. Okay, so now we know what transdimensional beamers uh, do, but it sort of indicates there that it's the whole unit that gets that benefit rather than a model. I mean, you wouldn't necessarily spend one CP just to add that ability just to one model. So I am a little confused by that, as always, by Games Workshop's writing. <laughs> uh, let me know what you think of it in the comments box below, of course. Right, so the next one is Epic Deed Stratagem. If you were the Space Wolves, these epic deeds would each get a song sung in their praise. Necrons don't have time for singing, they're too busy reclaiming the galaxy using stratagems such as the Deathless Arise. What's happened to, we get knocked down, but we get up again, da, da, da. yeah I can't sing. Right, the Deathless Arise 1 CP. Use this stratagem in your command phase. Select one Technomancer model from your army and to the end of the phase that model can use its rights of reanimation ability one additional time. Okay, but what does rights of reanimation do? We need to know that. Please tell us Games Workshop. Play this when your reanimation protocols haven't been as successful as you would have liked. Just when your opponent thinks they have an advantage, your dead Necrons return to the fray. Okay, this is obviously something to do with reanimation and it's done in the command phase. And we can do rites of reanimation, whatever that is, twice. And it clearly is to help models come back. So, fingers crossed, this is an extra bonus that's really going to help the reanimation protocol rules. As I said, we really need to find out what this right to reanimation actually does. Okay, next, requisition stratagems. These are the stratagems that you use before a battle begins. Ever wanted to upgrade your overlord to be the adjutant of their dynasty's supreme ruler? Hand of the Pharaoh, two CPs. Use this stratagem before the battle. When you are mustering your army, if your army does not contain a model with the Pharaoh keyword, 
okay we've got a new keyword there select one Necron's Overlord model from your army excluding named characters that model gains the Pharon keyword and in your command phase can use its My Will Be Done ability one additional time. You can only use this stratagem once. Okay, this sounds as if it's going to be quite good. Obviously, this Pharaon keyword is new and it's going to bring new stuff. Um, I wonder if the one CP stratagem to give you two My Will Be Dones will be gone and it's all done with the Pharaon keyword somehow instead. Obviously, we're sort of only seeing half of the story here. Until we actually get the full rules, we, we won't know exactly. But let's have a look what GW say. Use this on an overlord before the battle and ensure that they always have two nearby units. So you can give them both that bonus to their attacks. Don't forget that since it lasts until the next command phase, it will affect both shooting and close combat. Which of course is how it's always been anyway. Right, next, strategic ploy stratagems. Just in case all of the others weren't quite strategic enough, there are the strategic ploy stratagems. Hard to say. Fans of the canoptic scarab swarms, and frankly, who doesn't love the little critters, will be itching to use this self-destruct stratagem, which of course we've had previously, but maybe we've got different rules. Self-destruction 1 CP. Use this stratagem in the fight phase when a Canoptic Scarab Swarm unit from your army is selected to fight. Select one model in the unit. After that unit has finished piling in, you can select one enemy unit within engagement range of that model and roll 1d6. On a 2 or 5, that enemy unit suffers d3 mortal wounds. On a 6, that enemy suffers three mortal wounds. The Canoptic Scarab Swarm model is then destroyed. Okay, so it's not really a new one, it's basically an improved stratagem. I have to be honest, I've never really used this stratagem myself, uh, personally when playing Scarab Swarms, but if you have, of course, let me know in the comments box below and how did it work out for you. Play this stratagem when your Scarabs are outnumbered and outclassed in combat and you want to take some of your enemies down with you. Of course, it's a suicide scarab. Alternatively, if you want to disrupt your opponent's tactics with some disappearing and reappearing Ophidian destroyers, use Burrowing Nightmare. Okay, now this is going to be interesting. I'm looking forward to seeing this one. Use this stratagem at the start of your movement phase. Select one Ophidian destroyer unit from your army that is on the battlefield. Remove that unit from the battlefield. In the reinforcement steps of your next movement phase, you can set that unit back up on the battlefield anywhere that is more than 9 inches away from your enemy models. If the battle ends and the unit is not on the battlefield, it's destroyed. Employ this stratagem when you need a late game objective grab. It's also great for eliciting a real double take from your opponent. Yes, that unit was right there, and now it isn't. Where is it going to be next? Okay, well that sounds quite good, although we do know that the Ophidian Destroyers are pretty fragile, let's say, with their save. So, are they going to be round long enough to enable you to do this? I'm not sure how it would work late game-wise, but it could work quite well early game wise to have them on the table to maybe get your opponent to deploy in a certain way and then to put them into reinforcements to come out the next turn somewhere else on the table. So you could use it as a distraction maybe more than how GW are describing it here. But again, let me know what you think of this stratagem. Okay, next, war gear stratagems. Want to improve your war gear during battle? Well, the cryptics have thought of that with the war gear stratagems, such as malevolent arching. 1 CP. Use this stratagem in your shooting phase when a Necron's model from your army targets an enemy unit with a Tesla weapon. After making that weapon's attacks, roll 1d6 for each other unit within six inches of that enemy unit and on a four plus the units being rolled for suffers one mortal wound. 
Use this stratagem when your enemy has clustered all of their forces together to give them a real shock. And a 4 plus is pretty decent, at least it's not a 6 plus. So a 4 plus, one mortal wound, it's not amazing. One CP, it could be worth it I suppose if your enemies are really clustered together. But I'm not sure how often I'll be using this one. There is also stratagems for each of the six Necron dynasties in the Codex. Anyone who chooses to follow the Silent King and pledge allegiance to the Serican can use the Emphric Dampening War Gear Stratagem. 1 CP. Use this stratagem in your opponent's Psychic Phase. When an enemy Psyker attempts to manifest a Psychic Power within 18 inches of a Serican unit from your army, roll 1d6. On a 4+, plus, that Psychic Power is denied. Wow. That is pretty good. Implement this stratagem when you wish to dismiss warp spawned powers with the same contempt that the Silent King himself would. Along with the new units detailed in the Necron Codex, these stratagems will change the way that the army plays, giving you loads of more options to deal with horrors of the 41st millennium. Codex Necron is a play, blah blah blah. Okay, so pre-orders on Saturday, of course, and if you do plan to pre-order yours, then why not check out Mike's Gaming Store? There's a link to it in the description below. Check him out, he's doing up to 25% off pre-orders, and he's a member of the Idic Beer Wargamers Unification, so you'll be supporting a fellow Unification member. As for these stratagems, they don't seem to be game-changing. Maybe the Deathless Arise could be but we'll need to know more information but we won't have to wait long because the codex is nearly here now if you want to see more of my ninth edition necron videos then check out this playlist and i'll see you in the next one beam me up